What's up guys, welcome back to another video. And in today's video, we'll be introducing ourselves to PyQt6. Let's get right into it. But before getting into PyQt6, let's first understand what Qt is. Well, Qt is an open source toolkit for developing powerful cross-platform graphical user interface or GUI applications. And to define a few key terms here, open source means that the code is, the source code I mean, is readily available to the public and it's sort of like a community project where anybody can uh, modify and contribute to the source code upon approval, of course. And cross-platform means that it can be used across multiple operating systems. So we're talking about Mac, Windows, Linux, Android, etc. And a graphical user interface, or what we call a GUI, is the interaction between user and software. And this is typically through events, such as clicking a button, moving your mouse, etc. This is all these are all events. And so it's really a, a input output uh, interaction between the two. Now, more specifically, PyQt6 is a wrapper of the C++ Qt library. So what does that mean? Well, really all the, the features and methods and implementations that we're using in PyQt6, it's already been implemented in C++. So when we want to look at documentation, there already is documentation for PyQt6, PyQt6 but the C++ Qt documentation is more complete. And since the methods and, and features and everything is similar, really the same, if we wanted to, it may be more useful to look at the C++ documentation instead and then just convert that code to Python. All right. Now, as you can probably tell by the title, we're going to be using PyQt6. This is the latest version of PyQt as of today. All right. Now let's get into creating an application. So to create our first app with PyQt6, the first thing we're going to have to do is install PyQt6. Now this is actually very simple. So to install PyQt6, every operating system is going to have a command line interpreter. So for Windows, it is your command prompt. For Mac, it is your terminal. I know this for sure. So you're going to open that up, and all you're going to type is pip install PyQt6. Okay, so I'm actually going to show you right now. So here I have my, here I have my command prompt. I'm on Windows, so that's what it's called. I'm going to type pip install pyqt6. And if you don't have pip installed, I'm going to link that in the description, but hopefully you do. And as you can see, I already have all of the, I already have it installed, so it's not going to do anything, but for you, it would download and install and all of that. And that's pretty much it for installing that. Now, once we have that installed, we can actually get into coding. So here I have my example, basic underscore app dot pi. I'm going to open that up and let's walk through it. So here's our basic underscore app. This is really as basic as you can get. We're going to walk through this code line by line so we can really understand the the basics of creating an app with PyQt. All right. So first, we're going to you know, import these classes from PyQt from PyQt six .qt widgets. Now, PyQt six has three main classes, and for now, we're just going to be using Qt widgets. This is all we're going to need. And from Qt widgets, we're really just going to need Q application and Q widget. Now, I have Q push button for uh, for an example later on. But these are the essential classes that we're going to need. And I'm going to talk about what these classes do later. All right. Next, we're going to import sys. So this allows for command line arguments, and this will be evident in the next line of code. So the reason we need sys or need, we don't really need it. But in order in order to run command line arguments, uh, we're going to we're going to need to import sys. Now, next we have this this syntax here. We're going to create a variable, and this is going to be an instance of the Q application class. Now, Q application, this really is the event loop, which we're going to talk about later. And this holds the event loop for your class, for your application, I mean. And every program needs a Q application instance, okay? So this is going to be in every application because it is going to hold your event loop, okay? Now, you may notice that we have this argument here, sys.argv. Now, 
This is what allows you to run command line arguments. And what does that mean? What does command line arguments mean? Well, right now I'm running my code in VS Code, so I'm not using a command line interpreter to run my code. But say, for example, if I wanted to use my command prompt to run this code, I would just put Python and then the name of the Python application. This you would need this to, to run the program, okay? So anything that you want to do with the command line to run this, you need sys and then this argument here is sys.rmv. Now, if you don't want to use, if you don't need to use command line arguments, you know that, such as this example, where I'm just using VS Code, you can also pass an empty list here. But for practice, we're just going to uh, use, put this here, okay? Now, next, we're creating a window. So what we're doing here is we're creating a variable window, and this is going to be an instance of the QWidget class. Now, every program needs at least one window. You can have multiple windows, but for this example, it's going to need one, and it's going to be a QWidget. Now, QWidget is really just the base widget. So when we talk about widgets, we're talking about a multitude of, of features, such as a button. It could be uh, a text line edit, so uh, users entering text. These are all widgets. And really, every application, everything you place on your screen is a widget, OK? So right now, we're just using the base widget, which is QWidget. And this is hidden by default. So all top level widgets or really widgets are hidden by default. So we have to show them. And we just do this by using window.show. So the name of the variable dot show. All right. Oh, so nothing will show up on the screen. And lastly, we're going to do app.execute. So like I said, queue application, this is the event loop. We have to execute our event loop. So this is going to really run the program. All right. Now, an application is going to it's going to be in an event loop. What does that mean? So every time we do something, say we click on a button or we move our mouse or, or anything that interacts with the software, this is called an event. And this is going to go through an event loop. So every time we have we do something like click, click our mouse, the event loop is going to have an event handle that's going to check that event and it's either going to do something with the event or it's not going to do something with the event. OK, so it's going to really check if we have something hand, if we have a handler for that event. And if not, it's just going to keep going through the event loop and check for more events. OK, so that's what our app is doing right now. We don't have any events handled. So uh, to close out of this event loop, we're just going to close the application, basically. And that's really the only event that's, be, that's being handled. And that is it for the survey. Basic program is only 11 lines. But let's run it. All right, so this is it. This is the amazing, exciting program that we that we've programmed. Uh, it's just a blank window, but this is the skeleton of our applications. Okay, now a few points that I want to make. This window here, this I said that we're going to use the base Q widget. This could be any widget. So Q push button is a is a widget. So instead of putting Q widget, we could put Q push button, and this would run just fine. All right. Now notice that this isn't actually a button. Our whole program is just a button. It doesn't do anything because we haven't handled it. But we could have an event handler that says do something once we press this button, but we don't. So this is just saying that any any widget could be a, a window, but it's not very practical. It's not very useful. So in our next video, we're going to talk about QMain window. And this is a class that is really built specifically for implementing windows. So we're going to be using QMain window in our next video. We're going to be subclassing it. So we're going to be using object oriented programming to write our graphical user interface or GUI applications. OK, so that will be our next video. But before we get to that, I just want to show you that we don't need sys if we're not using command line arguments, which we're not in this video. This could just be an empty list and the program will run just fine, as you can see. But uh, we're still going to be using sys.rmv, OK? So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. 
in our next video, as I said earlier, we, we, we will be using QMain window to implement our windows and also we're going to be using subclassing QMain windows. So we're going to be using object oriented programming to create GUI applications. That is it for this video. Hope to see you in the next one. Take it easy.